Thank you for joining us again and welcome back to our channel. If you are joining us for the first time, we want to thank you for watching. In this episode, I will be looking into the reason why Western governments are disappointed with the current government in Senegal, why the hopes of having someone as a puppet in Senegal has failed. In this episode, I will be conducting a detailed analysis and research to regards to my perspective on the reason why the current president of Senegal, Bissoru Diamayo Fe's rhetoric, has much in common to those leaders in Burkina Faso, Guinea, Mali, and also in Niger, and that has disappointed the Western partners. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. In Senegal, February and March brought tension as then President Macky Sall, facing a term limit, postponed scheduled elections and seemed poised to remain in power past the expiration of his mandate. Street protests and outcry from at home and abroad for Sahel's hands. In a dramatic development, he has not only rescheduled the election but also released two of his key opponents, Osman Sonko and Bissero Diamaya Faye from prison. Sonko Sal's chief rival was also banned from running for presidential elections due to a long-running legal battle. But on March 24th, Faye, running with a slogan such as Diamaya is Sonko, achieved a smashing first-round victory with over 54% of the vote. In Western capitals, one could almost hear the single relief. Senegal, along with Ghana, is one of the two leading democracies in West Africa. The region saw five successful military coups between 2020 and 2023, and many of the elected civilian presidents, like Sal, have a patient for lacking on opponents and seeking third or four or fifth terms with regards to their own administration. Without mentioning Sal, the United States of America Department congratulated Senegal and also fire saying, we commend the millions of Senegalese citizens who voted along with Senegal's electoral institutions and judicials to faithfully upheld Senegal's constitution and also laws. Senegal's leadership is essential to resolving and many challenges facing the region. That's the statement that came from the United States of America. And yet, Fire's policy positions and public posture and those of Songo, whom Fire's quickly appointed Prime Minister, do not necessarily align with what Washington, Paris, and also Brussels and other Western governments have traditionally looked for in their African partners. Indeed, reaction to his victory in Paris were mixed. Officials in Washington and in Europe should give fire ample room to maneuver. However, it faces numerous tricky choices on the domestic, regional and also international scene and it would be better for all if succeeded in his own terms even if those partly clash with the United States of America's government positions. If you look at geopolitics in play, Sonko and Fire, both former tax inspectors, have branded themselves not just as anti-corruption and also advocates, but also as critics of France's relations with its former African colonies. In May, at an event with left-wing French politician Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Sonko commented, according to my own research, I want to reiterate Senegal's desire for self-determination, which is incompatible with the long-term presence of foreign military bases in Senegal. France, even before Senegal's election, was already reducing its presence in Senegal and some other African countries. The country's new leaders have also called for increased self-determination in the economic sphere, questioning both the status quo of the CFA franc, a currency with colonial origin whose reserves are still largely held in France and agreements with Europe in sectors such as fishing. If you look at perspective, such a stance shows that Faye and Sonko are not necessarily a polar opposite of the current presidents and also in those different countries that are frequently contrasted in the media from Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger and also in uh, different countries in the region. The juntas in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger come to power 
by toppling career politicians, widely perceived by citizens as ineffective and also subservient to France in rhetoric and policy. The presidents of those particular countries have strongly emphasized a certain vision of sovereignty, expelling French troops, in Niger's case, recently at Washington, attempting to dictate the terms of the security partnership. Faye came to power via a ballot box, but his and also Sonko's rhetoric sometimes overlaps with those of the offices in Bamako, Ouagadougou, Niamey, and across that particular region of the Sahel. Across West Africa, youthful citizens appear interested in sweeping policy changes, and many are more interested in the changes themselves than in where those particular changes occur via ballots or poaches. The emerging relationship between Faye and also the Sahelian uh, government, several of whom leaders are even younger than he is, is a complex. Traveling recently to Mali and Burkina Faso, one of many trips Faye has already taken in West Africa. The Senegalese president sought to persuade the junta's led Sahel state not to abandon the economic community of West African state. ECOWAS is a half century old regional bloc that has inconsistently sought to enforce civilian rule and democratic norms in the region. ECOWAS tangled with all three of the Sahelian governments as well as that of the country of Guinea and in all cases with ultimate unable to pressure soldiers into surrendering power. The three central Sahelian states declaring that the withdrawal from the ECOWAS are building an alternative structure called the Alliance of the Sahelian States. If you look at perspective, in pledging ECOWAS case, fire pleased not only regional heavyweights such as Nigerian President Bola Tinubu, but also policymakers in Washington and Europe whose favor ECOWAS as the first respondent for West African crisis. Indeed, Fire's trip to the Sahel may also have been partly paged at the European governance audience, reassuring them that the continent's officials that Fire wants to act as a regional leader and also broker of stability. Yet, scenes of Fire's side by side with Mali's Asimi Gaute and Burkina Faso Ibrahim Traore are also a reminder that Fire is unlikely to freeze out those states diplomatically or economically, even as Mali. Burkina Faso and also Niger continues to anger Washington and Paris including Brussels through their ties to Russia. Fire emphasizes Senegal's fundamental connection to its neighbors and nearby peers and countries. If you look at strategic option, the issue of Russia is another potential point of tension between Senegal's new ruler and Washington. So far, Russia does not seem to feature prominently on Fire's radar. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov touring Africa in early June did not stop in Senegal. Yet, Russian diplomats seem intrigued by Fire's rhetoric and Russia's ambassador to Senegal, Dmitry Kurokov, recently expressed eagerness to deepen economic ties. He is the difference between Senegal and Central Sahelian states loom large. Senegal has no mass insurgency or its territory and thus no need for Russian missionaries or major defense power. Yet Russia has become a symbol of anti-imperialism for some African states. If fire ends up taking a step or two in Russia's direction, Washington will be wise not to even overreact. He is a potentially quiet, valuable diplomatic partner in a very volatile region. If you look at strategic option as I close this episode, Faye and Sonko may prove less radical than their rhetoric would indicate. Faye's key economic appointees have been orthodox figures whose backgrounds are the International Monetary Fund, suggesting that an economic revolution may not be forthcoming after all. If those moves reassure Faye's critics in Western capitals, those critics might rethink twice again with regards to their particular approach. Senegalese voters backfires massively because they want change. Indeed, two successive generations of Senegalese youth have been gravely disappointed by change candidates in 2000 and also 2012, the second of whom was Marquis Sall. If fire breaks the mold of Senegalese president, it will be uncomfortable for the United States of America and Europe 
but if it doesn't, the country may face a fresh political challenge before too soon. The country of Senegal is making a strategic decision and choosing its own partners. We all should be looking at what happens in the country of Senegal and why the current president of Senegal has shocked Western partners with regards to their own perspective relationship with former colonial countries like France and other regional powers that are thinking to engage. We all shall be looking at how ECOWAS perceived as ECOWAS has been a disgraceful organization in the continent of Africa. We want to thank you for watching. Leave us your comments in the comment section and let us know what you think with regards to this particular relationship on how the Senegalese president will navigate their partnership with the Western powers and those of the region in the Sahelian countries, including Russia and also China. If you are a new year, we encourage you to leave us a comment in the comment section and give us your own perspective. We are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye. The Senegalese people have chosen to break with the past. I pledge to govern with humility and transparency and to fight corruption at all levels. I pledge to devote myself fully to rebuilding our institutions and strengthening the foundations of our way of life together.